Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Here to wrap up another project series, the little EL84 spud amp that we built to test our preamps with. And I don't believe I ever ran this on the audio analyzer suite by itself to show you what it does alone without anything else going into it. And I am going to be working on this 6SL7 preamp. The owner of it wants me to work on getting the hum out of it, put some better coupling caps in it, and do that kind of stuff to it. And I'm going to do a little further work on this. I had put some 12 AE7s in it, and I think some 12 AY7s are really a better fit for it, so we're going to try a set of those in it, do a little more testing on it, but probably not going to be doing any videos on this preamp work for in the near future. We are going to be working on a simple preamp where we're going to look to do a dual triode single stage preamp, and we're going to do that rather than the cathode follower like this one is because it allows for a lot of different variety of tubes to be put in it. When you use a cathode follower, it has to be configured for a specific tube because the plate voltage has to be correct for the grid voltage on the tube that's direct coupled to it, and then it has to be configured so that the cathode voltage works in conjunction with the grid voltage on the previous tube, which basically means you can only use one kind of tube in it. And so I want to build at least the 9-pin version where it's just the single stage, single triode, so that we can have everything from a 12A7 to a 12AX7, 12AT7s, you can put any of those in it. And I think that'll be a lot more versatile preamp, so we're going to go that route. Might do the same thing with the octal version that I'm going to build so that you only need one 6S and 7, but you would also be able to try a 6SL7. And there are potentially some other dual triode octal tubes that I've never experimented with that we can put in this thing and try them out. And then you only have to buy one tube, which also is cool. So, but again, that's for next year sometime. We're going to work on that project. But for now, we want to wrap up this little spun amp. And I did add this little indicator light here, which I think looks kind of cool. And it's silver and it kind of balances out the spacing. But anyway, we're going to put this thing on the Analog Discovery 2 with the Audio Analyzer Suite. Going to show you like what kind of output it has off of line source and what it takes to drive this thing. And you can basically really see what this is. And we'll talk about some other options at the end of the video. So let's throw this thing on the test equipment and see what we got. Okay, here we have the THD versus frequency. And we went ahead and pulled this before we started the video. And if you look at the 6BM8 amp with the little transformers it had, we had a pretty similar THD versus frequency response. We're down here on the low end. We have pretty high distortion. We got 10% at 30 hertz and 14% at 20 hertz. But this probably isn't an amplifier that you're going to hook up to some speakers that have a lot of bass. But even, you know, at 60 hertz, you've got 5%, which isn't unlistenable to, but isn't ideal. But I have found that Distortion down in the lower ranges isn't as noticeable as it is when you're in the vocal ranges. And once you get up to 200 hertz, the distortion versus frequency gets pretty flattened out to what the amplifier is going to be making. So this is pretty typical of these little small output transformers. And this was pulled at a half a watt of power. So 
Next, we're going to do a THD versus power, and this is with no preamp. This is just whatever this analog discovery 2 will put out into the input of this amplifier before it flatlines, and we're going to test it at 1000 hertz. And as you can see, usually we see this line here down below what the amplifier is putting out, but the volts RMS going in is above what the amplifier is putting out. And right here we have, it looks like at three and a half volts RMS is all that this little analog discovery 2 can pump out and it's putting out a half a watt and it's getting pretty close to 2% distortion. Right here we have 2 volts RMS going in and it's showing right at a quarter of a watt out and that's at 1% distortion. So without a preamp driving this thing it's really not shining much and I think part of it too is this analog discovery to the output of the signal generator isn't super clean and it might be why we're seeing a little higher distortion levels at this lower wattage but the main thing to be garnered from this is that it's not going to put out a lot of power on its own out of a 2 volt RMS signal out of a DAC. So unless you're using just some desktop speakers that are real efficient close to where you're sitting, you're going to need a preamp with this little spud. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this THD versus frequency at 0.1 watts just to take the analog discovery 2 signal generator out of the equation. And we'll come back after this is pulled and see if it looks any different. And as you can see, it's got the same slope as it did at the higher wattage, just, just moved down a little bit. So I don't think that the Analog Discovery 2 signal generator is really having any impact on the results that we're seeing on this graph here. So let's do our final pull on the frequency response to this little amp. And we're going to do it at a pretty low volume level too just because we know that there's not a lot of gain in this amplifier. And this is exactly what we were seeing with the preamps. And what's interesting is that while the EdCore output transformers that were used in the 6BM8 amp had a lot of distortion on the low end like this did. It had a lot better frequency response on the low end than these do. If you look at these, below 100 hertz, they start dropping off pretty quick. And, you know, it's down 3 dB there at 40 hertz, which is that's that's going to be audible and it really doesn't flatten out until it gets up to 500 hertz so I think these output transformers might be really guitar amplifier only kind of output transformers they may not be good enough for hi-fi use I'm, I'm having to guess at that right now because I haven't tested this same circuit with a different output transformer, but after seeing how those ed cores performed that were the same watts, they were 10 watt output transformers performed in that 6BM8 amp on this frequency response curve compared to these, I think the ed cores are going to be better. But again, that's for a future project to swap those ed cores into this amp and compare the two different kinds of output transformers but for now I would wait on 
building this with these musical power supply output transformers. I'm not sure that they are musical enough for hi-fi use. But again, need to test them directly in comparison to you know, swapping out with some different output transformers to see if that really is the issue, but I'm pretty sure it is. So that's it for doing the testing on this little guy, and let's wrap up this video. Well, as you can see from that testing, this amp needs a lot to drive it with. And while the audio analyzer suite doesn't have enough RMS voltage to bring this thing to full power, I did see that it takes about 15 volts peak to peak to get it to full power. Maybe even a little more than that. And so it's going to take a pretty good strong preamp to drive this thing to the full power from a line source. So if you're going to try to drive this thing just like off a DAC, you're probably only going to get about a quarter of a watt of power, which for a lot of people, that's just not going to be enough. Unless you're using it for, you know, a desktop and you got really efficient speakers, you know, real close to your seating position, you're going to need a preamp with it, which you don't with this, which is this was built more as a general purpose, you know, small amplifier. And so this did serve a good purpose for giving us a good platform for testing our preamps and learning how they sounded. And, you know, I'm not surprised to see the distortion and the profiles and everything that we got on the testing of just this by itself because we saw like the preamps had flat frequency response. We saw the preamps didn't have a lot of distortion. And then we saw the distortion that came out of this and I think some of the frequency response issues and the distortion is, again, from these little small guitar amplifier output transformers. And so one of the things that I do want to try is we're going to be building a slightly larger version of this with the 15-watt EdCore output transformers instead of these 10 watts. And so... When we build the second one of these, that's a little larger, and after we get done with that testing, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to like the way the version with the 15-watt transformer sounds better than this, then I've got these 10 watts freed up to swap out with these and play around with looking at the difference between these musical power supplies output transformers that were only 30 bucks a piece and these ed cores that I think are 50 a piece or 55 I'd have to go look but something like that so you know these are almost twice as expensive plus these have ultra linear taps so we can play around with you know whether using ultra linear and this configuration helps reduce the distortion which it should and so those are all projects for in the future the other thing, though, that I am interested to try is I found this tube, a 12HG7, and they've been used as driver tubes for 300Bs and 2A3 amps, and somebody actually, I think his name's Pete Millett, hooked them up to some Tango 4K output transformers he had just to hook a scope up to them and kind of see what they did. And out of line level, he got almost two watts of power out of a single stage Pinto amplifier, which I think is cool to have no driver, just single stage, one Pinto per channel and single in out through one two. So anyway, got a couple of those tubes ordered. Of course, we're going to have to rewire the whole amplifier. You know, that's going to, change some things with it but again these are these are kind of test beds and I know a lot of people say you know why don't you just breadboard this stuff and hook things up it's I I would rather just build them wire them up and see what they sound like and I think y'all enjoy watching me build these things anyway and so that's the way we're going to roll here on this channel so Hope you're enjoying the process, watching me build this stuff, watching me play around with this stuff. Again, I think this 12HG7 project is going to be fun. 
couldn't find anybody that has ever built an amplifier based off of using those as the you know single tube output tube type uh, layout so I think that's going to be fun it's kind of like what prompted me to do that 6SQ7 amp was I couldn't find anybody that had ever used those as audio amplifier tubes so it's like let's do it and they ended up sounding amazing so these 12 HG7s may knock it out of the park too and they could sound like garbage the only way you know is to build stuff Hook it up to some source and some speakers and see what it sounds like. And you know, that's the way we roll here at Skunky Design. So, hope you're enjoying my channel. That's a wrap for this playlist. We're pretty much done with this thing. And the only things that I did change on this was I bypassed the input capacitor because there's no reason for it to be there. And the rest of it stayed the same. I experimented with some, well, I did think I increased the value of the cathode bypass capacitor to a 330 UF. And that did help the low end just a touch. Not a lot, just a touch. So, anyway, I'm going to put the final schematic on my website. We're done with this. If you want to build an amp that needs a preamp, for whatever reason, or you just think this is cool and it's a simple kind of thing to build, it works, it sounds good, but not putting the skunky design patch on it just yet. This one's got one, not yet. I'm, I'm still up in the air about these output transformers and it just really doesn't have the bass response that I'd wanna see out of, a, out of something that's a dedicated amplifier with a preamp, so. Anyway, there we are. So if you're liking this content, you like my channel, please subscribe. Please like the video. And we'll see you soon for more Spud Amplifier Fun. Have a great day.